Hey, so what am I doing in my closet with my shirts? Well, you've probably heard that your clothes closet is the best place to do your recording. And that's pretty much true. And uh, there's a number of videos out there that show you how good of results you can get in your clothes closet. But I'm actually going to show you scientifically that this is the case and why. So if you stick around, you're going to learn a little bit about acoustics today and reverberation time, often called RT60. I'm not a professional acoustic engineer, but I do have a master's degree in electrical engineering, including signal processing. So I do know the topic a little bit, but acoustics was not my specialty. But uh, I, I know enough to be dangerous in learning this kind of stuff. So hopefully uh, uh, my results will, have, will carry some weight with you. Although it's nice to listen to the acoustic differences between rooms and room treatments, there's a lot of value to actually measuring the difference so we can find out unambiguously if we are recording audio in the right place. We are going to use a standard acoustic measurement called RT60, which is just the time it takes for a signal to decay 60 dB or down to the noise floor. The great thing about this technique is that it can be done by amateurs like you and I. What we do is record an impulse such as the popping of a balloon and using our DAW software draw a regression line through the peaks of our waveform displayed in dB. Our measurement will simply be where the line crosses the minus 60 dB point. We are going to use a balloon pop or impulse, but professionals use white noise that is filtered by octave and measure from where the signal is cut off. This gives them a measurement by frequency range. Over a hundred years ago, a guy by the name of Sabine derived a formula that can be used to predict what this RT60 time will be given the dimensions of a room and the absorption of its surfaces. We won't try to do that, but a couple of useful observations can be made from it. The larger the room, the longer the decay time. Closets are typically the smallest rooms in a house, so that makes sense. The more absorbent surface area we have, the shorter the decay time, and closets have lots of absorbent clothing, so that all fits too. My measurement setup is just a Zoom H1 recorder, set to sample at 48 kilohertz using 24 bits and stored in a lossless WAV file. The nice thing about using a portable recorder like this is that we can easily move it from room to room, we don't have to worry about dropping any recording data, and the microphones are actually quite sensitive because they're designed to record, among other things, music in a large room. The built-in mics actually have a pretty good frequency response, and we can actually record in stereo, which gives us two measurements at differing angles. The first room we're going to look at is my home office where eventually I hope to get out of my closet and record YouTube voiceovers and audiobooks. I will be installing some acoustic panels, and after that project is complete, maybe I'll make another video on how that worked out. It's a fairly large room with horrid acoustics, so it'll be a good contrast with the closet. The worst part is the stained concrete floors, which reflect practically 100% of the sound. So let's pop a balloon and see what we measure. Okay, 1.1 seconds, which is pretty high. The first treatment I did was to spend 100 bucks for a rug and a 3 8 inch felt pad. I could hear the difference in the room immediately, but let's measure it. Wow, 0.75 seconds, or about a one-third improvement. Pretty good for spending 100 bucks. Okay, now let's check out the closet. The first spot we'll measure is right in front of my shirts where I filmed the intro. It's where I've been recording for several years. The downside of this spot is the closet is pretty large and has a doorless opening to the bath area which has lots of hard surfaces. Hmm, that comes in at 0.35 seconds, less than half of my office area. All right, hidden in the back of our closet is a narrow storage area. There are two good things about this. No opening to the bath, and it's extremely narrow, so the volume of the room should be a fraction of the main closet area. According to Sabine's formula, we should see a big reduction in the reverberation time in this spot.
Aha! 0.185 seconds, or about half of the other spot in my closet. Well, I guess this means I have to endure the claustrophobic back closet area until I can treat my office area and make the trip back and forth for editing for a while. All right, numbers are good, but there's no substitute for actually listening to the same piece recorded in all of the different environments. So what I did is I took the beginning of the LibriVox one-minute test and recorded it in all four and just repeated about a seven-second snippet for you just to get a sense of uh, what these four environments sound like versus the uh, reverberation time. People were pleased to find that Peter Piper had picked a couple of pages for Fable fans at LibriVox. People were pleased to find that Peter Piper had picked a couple of pages for Fable fans at LibriVox. People were pleased to find that Peter Piper had picked a couple of pages for Fable fans at LibriVox. People were pleased to find that Peter Piper had picked a couple of pages for Fable fans at LibriVox. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and learned a little bit about how you can get the best acoustics for voiceovers in your work setting. If so, please click like and subscribe below or leave me a comment. I love getting comments on my videos and try to respond to them as quickly as I can. Happy recording!